Welcome to the Commander Community, the show where we discuss everything, the people, the places, and the things beyond the tabletop of Magic the Gathering's most popular format, brought to you by Star City Games. Hi, I'm Anthony Alonji. And I'm Sheldon Minnery. In each episode, we'll address one or more hot-button issues in the Commander Community. We'll talk about Commander's current events, the intersection of our hobby with life in general, oh, and yeah. more. And I, uh, more. Oh, there's so more. much more because I am, with every episode, a, a package guarantee in every episode, fresh upon opening, ready to ask Sheldon, Sheldon, what the hell is wrong with you? And I am 100% likely to still not have an answer. All right. Fair enough. Okay. So the, the big news of last week was Wizards of the Coast making a very strong statement by banning cards with problematic names, imagery, text or the synthesis of those elements. Uh, you can check out their full statement on their website, but I think here is the main portion of it. Uh, we will be removing a number of images from our database that are racist or culturally offensive, including invoke prejudice, cleanse, stone throwing devils, Protestant gypsies, jihad, imprison, and crusade. So they've also promised to do a further review of all other card names and images. Uh, obviously, that will take some time. So we're not going to go into what makes these cards individually offensive. Uh, to us, they're pretty abundantly clear. And if they're not to you, there are plenty of online resources. Or you're welcome to hit us up privately. Yeah, you know, in absolutely. the show notes, you can get our um, our social media profiles. I'm I'm happy to discuss these things with you. Yeah. There's been quite a bit of chatter on the Commander RC Discord already, so you're welcome to head over there. Uh, so what's your first impression here, Anthony? Uh, yeah, my first impression is that this is, I mean, this is a good move. There were a couple different ways they could go. I've seen some nice chatter on, so, on social media, those channels and Twitter chat, where people are talking about other ways that we could deal with things besides banning them. But I, 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 the ban itself... Uh, I understand why. I understand it is a uh, for tournament sanctioned play, especially. You know, we don't want uh, people to feel uh, or be unwelcome in those spaces. It, I mean, it absolutely must be that that when we have tournament formats and 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 and, and those kinds of sanctioned plays, or when we are having um, sanctioned sort of commander nights at local game stores, that there is a corporate backed. You know, the institution backs. The uh, and, and backs the store, backs those in the stores from saying, "I'm sorry, you know that card, it is not appropriate. We we made a mistake when when it was printed, and it's just not it's not available. The card is not available. Uh, yeah. And so that's what I like about the state, this particular path. I there are other ways, and and uh, and and I understand what others are saying about other ways of dealing with things. Sometimes when we ban things, we make them more precious to some. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the card price can go up and people can profit from this. And I'm, I'm open and I'm listening to that particular line of, of logic as well. Uh, and I still think it's, it's okay for us to, to do this and to try it, to support it. Uh, I think it's also important for us to listen to those voices, uh, from members of the community who represent whether we're talking about, uh, the, the, the African-American culture that's being, uh, you know, frankly, at times insulted by these cards, uh, and, and, and appropriately so. I, I, th I think that we have to listen to all these voices and hear what they have to say and hear. I, I, I kind of wish the most valid criticism of this path is that it doesn't seem like they consulted with those voices beforehand. And I, that's the one thing that's, that that's just has me, gives me pause, Sheldon, is I wish, I wish I saw more of that interaction. Uh, right. And we're going to talk more about that later. But I, but the action itself, probably fine, probably good. I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of it. I, I just want to hear more from the people that I think have the most interesting and relevant things to say about this. Right. This, uh, yeah, to, the, 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 yeah. The real stakeholders of yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So the, the Commander Rules Committee quickly aligned with Wizards of the Coast in, in this regard. Uh, and here's what we said. Effective June 10th, 2020, Wizards of the Coast is removing seven cards from all their constructed formats. We support the message they're sending through this action and stand with them in, in attempts to foster a more inclusive and positive culture. We will be following suit in Commander. Uh, you know, you, you don't, 
And that Wizards of the Coast doesn't run the Commander ban list, but right. it makes a, an abundant amount of sense for us to to align with them in this regard. Yeah, agreed. So, and I think the, the relevant point that I want to call out here is something in the philosophy document, uh, which is freely available on the Commander RC website, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, in paragraph three, we say, the ban list seeks to demonstrate which cards threaten the positive player experience, which is at the core of the format, or to prevent players from reasonable self-expression. So to me, that's not just limited to what the cards do within the context of the game, but in the broader context as well. Right, yes. Uh... You know, uh, Sheldon, we, I th thought a lot about this. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about it before uh, these these card bannings. Certainly, I've been thinking about it a lot since as well. Uh, and as we record this, by the way, I think it's, it's worth noting that you know we're just a few days in fresh as we record this uh, for right. context, folks. Uh, so there may be additional actions that are taken. There may be additional things that people do. There may be additional things that our local game stores, as some of them try to open or function, you know, I know in, in a <laughs> pandemic age, it's adding a layer of complexity that's making these conversations ever more tortured. Uh, but, uh, but, I do, but I do think that there's going to be a lot of people who say, because I know I've already started to see it, oh, you know, what's next? You know, what about this card? What about that card? What about this? Won't this offend somebody if you know? Can't we? Won't we ban that? Won't we ban that? Um, in these, this the, the 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 false. There's so many false logical arguments that are yeah. out there nowadays. In 2020, 2020 is the year of false uh, logic, and uh, more so. I thought it was 2019, and before that, I thought it was 2018, and before that, I thought it was 2017. But each year manages to just ramp up to raise uh, the bar. Yeah, uh, just a little bit more. And in this case, the slippery slope argument is just really, uh, it is borderline, maybe over borderline offensive uh, in this case. Uh, you don't not do good things because you're afraid that over time people will start to do too many good things. Um, right. And you don't also, uh, you don't even do it if you think that maybe down the road some of those things might not be as good. Uh, mm -hmm. You do the good things now. You do them now because you know they are good. Uh, nobody, I've, I haven't seen anybody try to make the the the, uh, the argument that invoke prejudice is no big deal, uh, right? Right. So so even if we made the ban list one, let's just start there. We don't have to go card by card, but if we just start there. We say we know there's at least one card, so we should ban that, or we should take some action on it, right? And whenever you try to corner one of these people making this argument, their true colors really do show, because then there's deflection and there's whatever else, and so that to me. Uh, it's, it's not a convincing argument to see that. The, we're talking about a play experience here for, yeah. for people. We're talking about people who are, and, and there are lots of different people. There are people who are new to magic. There are people who have been with magic for a long time who just don't want to see that. There are people who represent different communities of color. Uh, there are Native Americans. There are white people. There are lots of different people who don't want to see this card. Who don't want to yeah. see it succeed? Don't want to see it become some part of linchpin of the mm -hmm. deck. Don't want to don't want to see it. Don't want to see anybody make a card in the future that somehow now suddenly these cards are good <laughs> because most of them okay. are not that good from a technical perspective. So all of this is to say it's okay for us to take these steps and to say we're just not going to have this be part of the game anymore. Uh, and in this case, it's being expressed through a banning. There are other ways to do it. That's fine. Let's keep our ears open to other ways of doing it. And and if there are other cards that need same treatment or different treatment, then we should just then then, then wizards should do the right mm -hmm. thing, and we and they should talk to people <laughs> with different voices and right. find out what the best possible way that we can deal with this. Then they, yes, they have to make the decision. They're the corporation that that makes the cards. They have to make an executive decision as to what to do next, and then we as customers decide. Do we find this a, a reasonable way forward? And if we don't like it, if we don't like that these cards are banned because we're worried about slippery slopes, then I guess we get out of the game. And by we, I mean all the people who have a problem with it. Um, right. And if, and if we don't have a problem with that, if we support what they do, then we stay in the game, we stay their customer base, and we, and we stay in the community, and we support each other. So, the, and the, what about, what's your thought on the criticism that we should just stick to things whether it's Wizards of the Coast or the, the Commander RC itself, we should just stick things to things that affect gameplay. Yeah, you know, you know, there's all sorts of things during a game, Sheldon, that I can do that can offend somebody else that aren't technically gameplay. You know, I can call somebody a name. 
Uh, I could insult them. I can do all kinds of things. Now, it doesn't affect the cars on the table, Sheldon, you know. Right. Uh, so, you know, the fact that I call somebody a such and such or that I, you know, you know, I suggest somebody, you know, I make some sort of unwanted advance on somebody or I suggest somebody isn't really male or female or whatever, they, you know, all these different ways that we can insult people that we have found uh, over, over the centuries. Uh, th that all doesn't technically affect gameplay, but we don't want it in the game. Right, but what can the you know what could the commander RC do about that? I can't, I can't stop people from insulting other people. No, you can't. But you have the bully pulpit. It's a little bit like the power of a president, if you will, like a leader of a free country, <laughs> um, and you and the RC collectively, uh, sure. and and the advisory group represent this ability to say this is right or this is wrong, and when you do that. And you're doing, in my opinion, you're doing it well. I'm not just here to be your your yes man. You know that. I ask, I will ask you before this episode is over. What is wrong with you? <laughs> um, there there are there are things that you can do and say that if you said if you said Sheldon, you know, I get why wizards banned it, but invoke prejudice isn't really that big a deal. That would send a chill down the spine yes. <laughs> of the entire EDH community. Yes. It would be... I would hope uh, so. Simultaneously grotesque, exhausting, unacceptable. I mean, there would be all kinds of things. And, and, and at the same time, I know for a fact, and you know for a fact too, that there are people in our community who would be like, yeah, see... Not such a big deal because right. Sheldon, the godfather of the format, said it was OK, just like they just like a lot of those people do with the White House. Mm -hmm. And so that that sort of bully pulpit power, that ability to set the tone and to say these are acceptable. This is why we create the format. We create the format to to welcome people into casual play, to welcome people into something new and to make Commander the best, you know, the best format in Magic. It's the best format in Magic because it, it makes us talk and think about Rule Zero. Nobody in a tournament talks about a Rule Zero style thing. There are behaviors and standards of play, but they're codified in rules and you can be disqualified and stuff. Nobody can technically disqualify somebody from a Commander game. You have to work it through like every other human relationship and either get that person to leave the table Mm -hmm. Or find a way to get them to work with you to, and, to and be in. part of your new community. So it's a, it is always the tension between casual play and um, sanctioned play. Which one is harder to play? Honestly, I've never thought sanctioned play was that hard to play. It's hard to, for mm -hmm. me to win, but it's not hard for <laughs> me to play. Um, and and it's and it's much harder to play commander over and over again with different people and different parts of the community because it is like every other aspect of life. It is like us trying to get along with each other and figure each other out. And we're different from each other. It's what this is supposed to be about. So what is your role? Your role is to remind us that we have standards of behavior in civilization. We have standards of behavior in the community. They, are, they, they, they can and should be roughly parallel and they can and should be elevated over time. We should be doing better because we all need to do better. Well, an, another part of the philosophy doc document talks about Commander mm -hmm. being a resonant experience mm -hmm. and right. where we where we focus on not just our own enjoyment, but the enjoyment mm -hmm. of the play the players that we're sitting down with. Yes. So so it seems like a no brainer to eliminate just, you know, the sort of nonsense that might bring problems to, to bringing that community together that might you know, put up a barrier mm -hmm. to to having that re the resident experience between the players. We want players to sit down and have a good time. Uh, and I clearly, a couple of these cards are just going to make things a little more awkward. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, some of them don't really see any play. So that's good in the first place. Right. But yeah. but it, it would be silly for us to to not think big picture, to not think about breaking down barriers instead of putting them up. Right. They, it, it, there is, it, it's weird for me to hear the, 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 some, of, some people on, on um, social media argue simultaneously, these cards don't see much play, and uh, I can't believe they banned the cards and they really shouldn't, and what's next? Because either it's a big deal or it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell, 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 what, what's, what's really bothering you? Is it bothering mm -hmm. you that these cards are bad? 
Or is it bothering you that these cards are no longer allowed in your deck? Not that you were ever right. thinking of running them until now, probably, with the possible exception of Crusade. I can remember a long, not 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 long ago, maybe about five, sure. ten years. I think I had it in a very dedicated white deck because mm-hmm. there were just lots of cards like that. But there are well, the beauty is even if I still have that deck together, which I don't, uh, there are lots of cards like that, and there yeah. are there are lots of uh, effects. So it shouldn't even bother us then. Not that that would be the, what should be a deciding factor in this case. Yeah, so yeah, I, there, I, there, there may be cards that they pick maybe next week, maybe before, between the time we record this and the time it releases. There could be, they could pick a card where it's like, oh, you know, oh, Soul Ring. You know, let's, let's take a, let's take an example right. that clearly is not going to be an example. Right. Uh, let's say, oh, Soul Ring. You know, it suddenly somehow finds the slippery slope finds its way to Soul Ring. <laughs> Um, okay, well, is there a substantial community uh, that's out there that truly finds us offensive? And can we look and dig into the historical reasons that these co- other communities can find for why mm-hmm. it is it has has the problems and, 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 uh, and it does it create a persistent problem that in order for us to elevate ourselves as a species in a community, we've got to get rid of this card? If so, then we get rid of the card. Um, and, 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 we, and we stop playing. We're all about I mean, elevation here, yeah. Yeah, I, so, so so I am fine following this train of so-called logic of slippery slope that others are using. If it means that we add multiple cars to a ban list, then we add them. Uh, and you can, and I think from a rules in tech, I know you always, I know you hate banning cards, you know, sure. normally for, for 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 very good reasons. You want the you want the format to be easy to follow. But if everything is banned, if, uh, if this card is banned in every other format. Then there's a list you can refer to. You can say we. Yeah. I think over time we're probably going to have a sort of a, a core band list, like this sort of like a. Yeah, it's in every format. It's banned, and we're so just just don't play. Gonna, it. We're gonna we're gonna reference 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 it in that way. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's like these easy to these track. cards these cards have been banned in in all formats due to their cultural insensitivity or however right. we're um, categorizing right. it. And you know, right now on our on our ban list, it doesn't mm-hmm. list every card that we ban. Mm-hmm. It only lists the cards that um, that you wouldn't think of otherwise that aren't in the categories. Conspiracies are banned. Um, yeah. Dexter, you know, dexterity cards are banned. Yeah. So we don't. So we have categories, and that way it's really easy to put those cards into categories. If right. for some reason, you know, I know Wizards of the Coast wouldn't do this today. But mm-hmm. if there was, you know, if they made a falling star or chaos orb card tomorrow, right. uh, we'd stick it back in that category because, mm-hmm. you know, Can't do we it. don't want dexterity cards to be part of the format. Right. So I think it's it's relatively easy for us to say, look, these cards, these cards just on a different level, not a gameplay level, mm-hmm. on a very different level, mm-hmm. uh, make a bad experience for a significant enough portion of the community that we we don't want them around. Right. Uh, I had somebody I had somebody come to me on social media and was like, "All right, well, I play Invoke Prejudice because of you know because uh, what it does in the game, mm-hmm. and I want it to stay because I because I'm not doing anything broken with it." Mm-hmm. And I tried to explain to that person that what the card is doing in the game is not the important part. Right. I, right. Hopefully that resonates enough with them. I hope so, so too. I do have a friend who's in my my long time play group who has the card, uh, hasn't played it. I, I ju- ju- just in the last year threw it into a deck, a, a brand new deck. I think that they were mostly just looking for cards that they ne- they were just trying to find cards that just they had never used. Mm-hmm. And I and 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 the I had, I guess I'd seen the card a very long time ago. And I hadn't mm-hmm. even thought about it for about a decade, at least, which, which is my privilege to not have to think about things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I hadn't thought about it. And then here it is in front of me. And I'm like, you know, you know, I've learned a lot these last three. I love the whole 1488 thing and all that crap. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so I didn't even know that much. But I, I just look at the artwork mm-hmm. <laughs> and the title. And I, and I was like, I was like, mm. I said to this individual, I said, wow, you know, wow. And, and and they looked at it after I looked at it, and they were like, "Wow!" <laughs> right? yeah. you know, he's like, like, like you know, you're you you're, you're building a deck, and you get in that fever, you kind of go go in, and then you start doing the things, and because you know, and this individual's white, you know, and again, expression of our privilege, we get it, 
and and I and, and I don't think it's gonna be very hard. In fact, I doubt it's in the deck anymore anyway. Uh, but I don't think it's hard when we all pull back together again mm -hmm. to say you don't have that card in the deck, do right, you? Dude. And and and, and, we're, <laughs> and it's gonna start a conversation. And I hope a pretty short one. I don't think it's gonna be a very difficult one at all with this individual. I, I just I just don't think it'll be um an issue at all uh but but if it is uh we're then we're gonna t have a and he's gonna get more serious and we're gonna have to talk mm -hmm. about it because a because it's banned thank you um but <laughs> also b even if it weren't at this point i think that there's we just have to continue to to grow i'd like to think mm -hmm. of myself as three weeks ago of having been pretty darn evolved on race issues i was mm -hmm. not evolved enough i need to get right. more evolved I hate, I shudder to think of the thing that will happen, may happen three weeks from now that will make me realize I have to evolve further. Hopefully I can just do it on my own. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I have a very sinking feeling that we're going to be having this discussion for a long time in this country uh, and yet. And I, uh, and I really hope that we can secure, make gains within the magic community and other communities that we can really uh, work together to, to, to make it so that each step we ratchet it. We don't go take two steps forward and three steps back. We take two steps forward and zero back. You know, we take one step forward and no steps back. We take three steps forward no steps back things things evolve right they do. and we we can we can recognize that we've improved and not necessarily rest on our laurels we can yeah. we can say things are better mm -hmm. to some degree than they were but they're not any place close to where we want them to be Right. So you have to you have to live in the world that you're living in while you're creating the world that you mm -hmm. want to live in. Right. And uh, it it struck me. It just struck me the other night when uh, we were watching TV, mm -hmm. and I've been watching the series Bosch. Uh, oh, I've heard good things about that. I yeah, Titus Weller. That. I like Titus Weller when he was on Deadwood, and um, mm -hmm. it's a procedural show, and the procedural stuff is uh, okay. Yeah. Um, the character development stuff, the side characters are great. He mm -hmm. takes the they the writers take the tropes um, that that we see in a lot of uh, procedural shows, yeah. kind of turn them upside down. Okay. But the the interesting point was, uh, and I don't know why. Uh, probably because uh, you know there's a there's a lot of the world's on fire right now, yeah. and um, there was just a scene where. Uh, this this couple had had a conversation, uh, and they came to an agreement on something. They kissed, and the you know, the, and the scene changed. And I remarked to myself that there was nothing about this couple kissing that was noteworthy, right? Except for the fact that when I first start, you know, when I first remember started remembering watching television in say 1966 or 1967 it would have never happened on tv did they have television of, back then they did have television it was mostly black and white but yeah. um, sounds like fake news but he, <laughs> but the couple was a black man and an asian woman okay and it it just it, it occurred to me that it just simply never would have made television right back then right so we've we we have a long way to go. Oh, we do. Oh, well, that that, that, we, that was. I remember. I, and actually, you know, um, while I wasn't watching TV back then, uh, I do, I do know that you know that that the sort of the the landmark um, Kirk Uhura kiss on uh -huh. Star Trek, which would have been around that same time, which was yeah. uh, black and white. I mean, the the idea that two mi different minority races could kiss, I'm sure, would have, would have been even more controversial. Right. Like, I, but you know, so yeah, I, I think how far think we've come we, and how far we've not come is just you know over and over again. How many times exactly? Do we because I mean the the counterpoint to that is that the our neighbor our neighborhoods are as angry in 2020 as they were in 1968. Maybe more, and so. we haven't and we haven't come that far in that regard. I, I, I heard somebody say online, you know, or somebody asked me online, you're like, you know, you know, Anthony, you know, I get it. You know, I get why you're upset. And I, I don't I know I, they were talking specifically about, you know, George, the murder of George Floyd and the subsequent protests and some of the riots that also occurred during that time with different people um, and the police response and all these other things that were happening. And they said, you know, 
you know, I, I just can't help but recall the words of Dr. Martin Luther, Reverend Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who, who, you know, and then they give a quote that's a that's a quote that suits their purpose about peaceful mm -hmm. protest. And you know, I have and I have two reactions about that now. Uh, one of which is, could we as white people stop? saying what we think the dead black guy would say. Um, and and secondly, uh, the good reverend would be 50 years older today, um, a, a, a healthily advanced age, and that's fine. And I think if we were still, if he saw where we still were, maybe, I can't speak for him, but maybe he would be a little bit more upset. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think we should just attribute quotes from 50 years ago to the same individual who today may or may not have the same perspective. I don't have the well, same perspective I had 50 right. years ago. Um, you but know. that's yeah, that's speculating on that's probably a line we don't we yeah. don't need to. It's a to it's explore. a tough it's a tough way to go. Can I can I ask one question before we before we move on to our interlude, which is you know there's the there's the potential criticism of of the the company that is just a publicity stunt. You know, you've you've worked there right you yep. had a short stint there more more i mean you know more than the average person has had sure um and i you know and i, and I so i, I want to put you on the spot a little bit uh and i want to ask you about i mean look there's a general statement we can make about corporations and publicity stunts we, mm -hmm. we can also make a general statement about large institutions like the government agency i work for you know and publicity stunts um you know we're not immune in the public sector or nonprofit sectors uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, do you have a thought on, you know, publicity stunt? How does this, how does this strike you? Well, it strikes me that it, it they needed, I think they needed to do something. They needed right. to do something to say, look, we're, we want to try to do mm -hmm. the right thing. Right. Um, I, I, I don't have any insight into the corporate mentality. Right. Um, and I, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in, in the B block. But yeah. I don't have I don't have any insights into into how things happen at the corporate level there. OK. Um, I know how they happen in the office. Mm -hmm. And my experience in the office was that it was a wonderfully diverse mm -hmm. um, environment that could have been a little more diverse. Mm -hmm. But there was no, I, you know. The only thing I saw was people getting along, and right. the 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 designers and developers and um, producers and every everybody that I worked with mm -hmm. were were very open, accepting, um, and you know represented a, a pretty good palette of people. Mm -hmm. um, in retrospect, in retrospect, the, there weren't as many people of color as I expected there would have been. Right. Right. You know, it's, it, it's the kind of thing probably that my privilege makes me sometimes immune to mm -hmm. that, that I, yeah, I probably could have recognized that, well, wait a minute, you know, sure. There are, there are some, mm -hmm. there's some representation here, but, but why isn't there more? Right. Um, but I, you got to start somewhere. You and, yeah. and if, and here's my response to the publicity stunt idea. Mm -hmm. If a company is going to do something good mm -hmm. because it's good for them and their PR image, mm -hmm. that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. They're still doing a good thing. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to question people's motives for doing good things. Right. You know, uh, some, sometimes good work comes from dark places and right. I, I'm I'm really okay with that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's it's hard to say. Um, I think I think they're they have like a lot of corporate America some improvements to make, uh, but right. I think they're from my experience, the right. people that I've talked to, even the upper level managers that I've talked to, I think their hearts are in the right place. Yeah. I'm 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 not I'm not going to go so far as to say what the hell is wrong with you. I am gonna I'm gonna push <laughs> gently. And say, and I'm saying it not from a position of moral superiority at all. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, uh, because uh, because where I'm going is I, I think that as I look around my own employer, uh, and I work for the state of Minnesota. For folks that don't know, and I, this is not an official endorsement or in any way a blah 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 of the state of Minnesota. Um, 
you know, I, the agency, I've worked for multiple agencies at the state of Minnesota. I've worked mm -hmm. for some that have a healthy amount of diversity, which by well, healthy amount, I would say, in proportion to the statistics of the state, the demographic sure. statistics of the state, right? Uh, I have also worked for agencies that are not uh, in that proportion. And I, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I think that those agencies that do not uh, currently have um, enough voices and mm -hmm. minds and perspectives and histories. Um, yes, you're right. The, the statement, the statement I absolutely agree with is you, you have to do something. And I, th and I also think that I want to hold all these institutions to a higher standard of if you do the right thing and it's, and it's, and, and it happens to do you good, that's, that's enough. I'm not, I'm trying not to rephrase what you said too, too much. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. that other people don't take it down a darker road. I, I mm -hmm. know, cause I know where your heart is and I, and I know that you and I are pretty, uh, pretty identically minded in this. I, I do think that, uh, I would like to see a series of good, thoughtful, positive pieces. And we'll get, again, more in the B block, I, I, I know, because because there are some people that I've I've gotten to know. I don't know the magic community as well as you do. I've started to get to know some of these voices. I've been out of mm -hmm. it for a while. I'm starting to get back into it. I'm learning new people, new voices. It's exciting, you know, for me. I, I enjoy seeing it, and, and I can't wait to learn more. Um, and, I, and I know you can't either. And, and, and I know that these voices are not yet impressed. Um, and I, and I think that what will, what will take to impress them is, is deeper consultation, um, and, and, a, and a more rigorous sequence mm -hmm. of, of actions. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing in what you said that, 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 uh, that opposes what I said. I, at yeah. all, I'm just, I, this is why I'm not saying what, what the hell's wrong with you. I'm saying <laughs> the the more gentle push of let's make sure that people don't hear either of us say, well, you know, they did a good thing and, you know, their heart's in the right place. And, you know, that, that seems, that seems okay. Not, it's I, not I, necessarily enough. Right. Yeah. I, I, th I think like, I want to see their, I, I'm going to be interested to know about their hiring practices. They have high profile people uh, with high profile Twitter or social media accounts who have made additional errors of judgment who need to step it up. Uh, and, and I, and I, and an own uh, their portion of 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 what the change is. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of these mistakes that they've made require deeper uh, deeper statements of of apology again, and, and retrition and contrition. Again, yeah. You, but you yeah. you have to start somewhere. You do, and and, we, and then move. We quickly. can't let them. We can't let them just rest <laughs> mm -hmm. on one thing. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Great. That was a first step. Yeah. Uh, that was a first step. Maybe here's how you could have taken that better, yep. but you've you've taken it. Um, sure, it was a little wobbly. Now, what's your second step? Yeah, what's what's next? And what's next? And what's next? And the other the other part I think that that needs to come from us in the community is how can we help? What's next? And right. I really, what's really really important to me, yeah, is is running the balance or is making sure. That mm -hmm. what contributions that people that look like me and you make mm -hmm. are not self-aggrandizing. I right. don't, I, I, I don't want anything to be misinterpreted. You know, anything that I do to be be misinterpreted is look how woke I am. Right, it's not the point. Yeah, right. But sometimes when you have a voice, when you like, as you called it, the bully pulpit. Yeah, you got to get up there and talk. Yeah, and uh, sometimes what what you say is let these other people talk. Here right. are some other people that you should listen to right. when we talk. You're at the bully pulpit and the best use of it is to drag, I think right now is to drag other people alongside you and give them their time at the bully pulpit. I know you do that. That is, that is something that I, and especially in this last year or so, um, I've seen you elevate a lot of different voices and I know we have a, we have, we, we, in fact, we have a new section of the show where, where I know you're going to start to do this. Um, right. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I need to let you, uh, I need, I need to, I need to let you do that. So, so as we, as we transition into the next section and we're not done, not even today talking about the, what we, where we started, well, we'll come back to actually, it in a moment. Before um, we get there, Anthony, before we get there. Yeah. Before we get there, I have a, I have one other question about the previous issue that yeah. I want to ask your opinion on. Um, so 
and it goes back to the the one card that uh, sort of really sparked it all. Mm -hmm. The artist of that card mm -hmm. is a self-proclaimed neo-Nazi. Yeah, a charming individual. Yeah. So, so where's the balance? Do do we do we're like well, we don't like what this person does in general. Uh, like getting rid of this card is easy, mm -hmm. but now wh where do you go? with everything else that that artist has produced mm -hmm. do you you know and, and you know this this falls right. into things like hollywood and right. uh, you know and and other yeah. literature do mm -hmm. you, where where do you feel where does anthony feel that the separation of the art and the artist comes i think that at some given speed i we can talk about what at what speed i am fine with everything that individual doing dying into obscurity that's okay. kind of my bottom line. Uh, did it have to happen next week? No. Okay. Can we talk about it some? Should we be seeking, as I asked, as I suggested before, should we be seeking the opinions of people across right. the entire diverse spectrum of the magic community? Right. Yes. Uh, so let's take at least enough time to do that and talk about it. Uh, and uh, I would be fine individually. I would be fine with everything that that the player does fading to obscurity. Do we need? A, I don't know if we need to ban all of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I don't know if this, this is the only really existing valid argument against banning these cards is that there might be another way to, to kill them, right. <laughs> to, to wash them <laughs> into obscurity that doesn't involve a banning. And so, to me, I care about the end result. What I care about right. is that as we sit down, there, there are plenty of uh, black artists, there are plenty of transgender artists, there are plenty of women artists, there are plenty of other artists who are not, who are not white men. Mm -hmm. Who could who whose voices have been suppressed for a long time? We can refill the ranks. We are fine. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of people who did art in 1500s and 800 and 300 BC or whatever that I know nothing about, and 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 they're all white guys, and I don't know them, and I don't feel like I've lost my heritage. I'm fine. You know, <laughs> I we can add more to the pile. I, I'm okay, and and I would love to see more space made for others. And so when somebody was, and you're not making this argument, I'm not trying to set up a no. straw man on you. Uh, but I have seen an argument that goes way too far off your, uh, you know, off your question, which, 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 which says, oh, whatever shall we do? They wring their hands. I can see them wringing their hands through Twitter. Whatever shall we do with all of, you know, with our history and with our heritage, you know, when, when, when all the other darker people, you know, come in and draw things. And I, and it just, it drives me up a tree to see that. I reject the argument. I'm fine uh, uh, banishing uh, all of this individual's work into obscurity, and if anybody else, especially self-proclaimed people, you know, who have been trying, people who have been working hard, people who have, who have made positive contributions, and there's, there's a difference between people like that and people and make occasional mistakes, and the people who are dedicated their lives to um, the opposite of where we need to go. Yeah, I I think the the art versus artist debate is incredibly complex. And incredibly nuanced, certainly in general, mm -hmm. outside the scope of, of, you know, of this show and, yeah. uh, you know, what we want to do. I was just taking taking the temperature of the yeah. the room uh, is an important skill and taking a temperature of the community is something, yeah. you know, like on that very question would be uh would be something compelling. No, you're you're, but, you're good. Before we leave it, I would just I would just say, based on your last statement, just realize that as I as a commander community, once we are once we're all back post pandemic, into whatever world we're in, um, and we're doing events in some numbers together in in person and things like that. I you know I go to those artist tables, at these big events, and I and I and I enjoy connecting with different and cosplayers mm -hmm. and. And, and I, I think it's valid to ask, you know, what do we do with individuals who are not in the technical sense, uh, uh, you know, it, part of the mechanics of what we were talking about earlier, like mechanics of the game mm -hmm. are not the only thing about the commander format. It's about that community is why we have the title mm -hmm. of the show that we've got. It's a community and it's OK to say, you know, there's there's yes, we have limited attention spans as human beings. We have limited amounts of memory, limited capacity to remember all the artist names. And the more diverse voices we get, the less of the monoculture we've had we'll be able to retain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. What well, which is a great which is a great segue, the mm -hmm. word community, yep. into our interlude. Excellent, yes. So as I was saying before, Sheldon rudely interrupted me with more <laughs> excellent talk. What the hell is wrong with you, Sheldon? 
Um, we were just about to talk about our Community Contributor of the Week. Uh, the Gathering is the most important part of Magic the Gathering in the community, Commander community. Well, just they're full of people who take it to the next level. Part of our responsibility on this show, we feel, is that every week we should be highlighting these people. We're going to, so we're going to highlight at least one person a week whose name maybe our, our watchers and listeners haven't, haven't heard of uh, and whom we think has done great work in the community. Uh, Sheldon, would you care to bring forward the envelope I would care. for this week? I would care. In fact, this week's Community Contributor of the Week is Melissa Whitaker, who's also known as Sylvie on Silver Online, mm -hmm. uh, mostly on Discord, although that's also her Twitter handle. Yeah. Uh, Missy's been paying it forward for a while. Uh, I met her in person at Command Fest at DC, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. uh, where we had some chats and we got into a game. Uh, about a month ago, she dropped more than 150 gift subscriptions cool. on the Jeremy Knowles Twitch channel. Nice. Then a few days later, mm -hmm. she visited Olivia Gobert Hicks stream, gave mm -hmm. away 50 more. Mm -hmm. um, a few days after that, which happened to be the first one where the Commander RC Twitch channel got to affiliate status, mm -hmm. she dropped another 50 on us. Nice. And when I asked her why, she just said, she's like, I'm just sharing my good fortune. Life, yeah. Life's good to me. And she was the one who used the term paying it forward. Yeah. Um, she, and she gave me a great, great quote. When I asked her, I said, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to do this. Are you okay with it? And she's like, sure. And she said, Commander is a good community of good people. Mm -hmm. We all love the game and we all love the community. Mm -hmm. We can't play Magic by ourselves. So why not promote the positives that we right. see every day right. in the Magic community? Right. Yeah. Nice. Nicely said. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, and I actually happened to uh, play in a game with her uh, the night before we recorded this on mm -hmm. Jeremy's stream. Mm -hmm. uh, with a matter of fact, it was me, Jeremy, Olivia, and Missy that mm -hmm. Jeremy had invited on for his Saturday night stream and and played a good game. And you know, it's building the community is exactly what she's doing. So yeah. that's why Missy uh, is our community contributor of the week. Thanks, Missy. I, 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 I am. Uh, I have not had yet had the pleasure. I look forward to perhaps a, a game in the future. My online presence is not where it will be in the in the near future. Also, I will be attending events once we once we have them again. <laughs> you know, I'm you know perhaps there. Uh, it would be wonderful to catch a game and some conversation. But I, right. what, what, I just when, I, when you think about what what she's done, th th these are the sorts of contributions that to me uh, highlight even more why. We just need new voices, new ideas. Yes, the same people, Sheldon, that were around when you and I first met 15 years ago or five, 1500, whatever it was. <laughs> you know, when, whenever, we, whenever we pull together, yes, we could have those exact same people come together and maybe somebody comes up with this idea and maybe helps out, uh, but maybe not. And, and we're, we're never going to move forward without new people. And mm -hmm. and uh, this is true of a lot of human endeavors and bringing in new, new new folks. You could be at your local game store and you could be doing donations of cards and decks and, um, you know, uh, uh, tickets and play and other stuff, supplies and things like that to people who are just learning how to play. Um, and, mm -hmm. and you could be doing this physically, too. I'm not talking to her. I'm talking to, you know, us. I'm not, I'm not giving her more to do on her list. Um, anybody could be doing this. Uh, and it sets a wonderful example that, that, that she has done this. So thank you, Missy, for, for, for what you've done. I, 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 it makes, in, in the middle of a, of a, of a difficult episode, um, demonstrating why it's so important that we keep this community healthy. Uh, yeah. It is, it, this, this is why. So that there is space and time and thought for this. This is what we should be talking about and not trying to justify, you know, dumb, slippery slope arguments for, you mm -hmm. know, the card that you kind of want to play because you're a closet racist. I, I, you know, this is where we need the, to go. The I, I, communities, communities help each other get through difficult times. And they certainly, do. certainly mm -hmm. the world is in a difficult time right now. Mm -hmm. And being, yeah. embracing your community, not mm -hmm. necessarily embracing and drawing in, Right. But getting your arms around um, right. your your community and helping the community get its arms around more. And, mm -hmm. you know, pretty soon we grow into a much bigger, tighter, um, more well-defined and mm -hmm. more group-interested community. And I, I, that's what we do. Right. 
So under normal circumstances, we'd move into a different issue in the B block, but uh, we think this one's important enough to stay with for a while. Yeah, I'm not letting you off the hook, Sheldon. Not okay. that you were ever on the hook. I, I just felt like I needed to say that. I feel I, this is just a this is just a thing. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm really going to be able to ask tell you ask you during this episode what the hell is wrong with you. So you really have to. You, could you slip up or something just so I could do that? That'd be great. Um, yeah. Well, let's but let's move into talking about how we could how you you and I could be uh, agents, further agents of of positive change um in this in this community um so, so there was a there was a catalyst and, and i guess where we start is um uh, zane zane begs um is is an, an online presence that i've just gotten to know recently uh and he has awesome stuff i frank, frankly the, the the thing that i that that makes me appreciate him the most is the uh, um is he has a great uh twitter photo right now that says running backs don't matter on his, <laughs> with, 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 uh, on, on his, on his, on his, on his, on his, that's a, a, big a, that's a great fan, shot, Zame. Uh, I know we, you and I don't know each other uh, much at all, but I just want to say that's, that's very good. Um, but, but that, that's, uh, but he has, uh, posted recently, uh, an article called, uh, the wizards I know, uh, in which he offered a less than flattering view of the corporate culture. You and I were just starting to talk about corporate mm -hmm. culture and my corporate culture, by the way, we're not letting. I'm not letting nonprofits and public sector where I've worked most of my career off the hook. Corporate culture, small c, small c, mm -hmm. just large institutional culture, if if one prefers. Um, and regarding the, their culture vis-a-vis uh, -vis race, and also he brings in some also. I think he touches on things that uh, that that I think uh, are certainly rooted in, uh, in in race and or make the race aspects worse, but also are true of large institutional culture as mm -hmm. well. I saw a lot that I recognize as well, and 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 it was really informative and thoughtful piece. Um, lots of folks have commented on the specifics of what um, Zame had to say. Uh, Zame had to say so. Uh, we'd like to focus on the power of the individual to to foster positive change, whether whether it's AIM or you or me or anybody else out there who's thinking of you know what can I do? Uh, you yeah, have thoughts I on that? I, I, yeah, I don't I don't want anything to devolve in mm -hmm. to you know here's an issue that 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 hit the community and it's terrible. Yeah, Agreed. so but, okay, it, yep. it's it's true, but now mm -hmm. what you know again right. just like just like we ask. Um, the people who have done things uh, in what we call incorrect, what, what we, we would call incorrectly, um, to change and uh, you know and try to move forward positively. How do we move forward positively? Right. And right. how do we you know how do we make an impact? Right. Um, Zame's article was a, in itself um, a synthesis of some Facebook posts that he made in response to Lawrence Harmon's open letter yep. to the company regarding its treatment of black players. Mm -hmm. um, and the Wall Street Journal later asked him for mm -hmm. a quote after the bannings happened. Right. Um, I think the first message we, we take away from here is that you have to speak up in order to get things done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, people have been speaking up regarding the systemic problems in America but we're just now seeming to get some track, some some traction. Yeah. So what I hope that what I hope here is that you and I can maybe strategize about what we can do in the context of our magic and commander communities. Yeah, agreed. So so my 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 first thought on this, you haven't asked, but I'm just going to start. Um, my first <laughs> thought on this is, and is I'm going to start with where where you were talking about, like like nobody. One of the things that I that I that I it wasn't really an epiphany. I I thought about this before, but I thought a re epiphany, a re epiphany, a re epiphany, uh, <laughs> re epiphany. That is now a word. Uh, a re epiphany that I had recently is that nobody who has spoken up with the voice of you know a black man, a black woman, um, a transgender individual, somebody for else from the LGBTQ community, a woman. Uh, just speaking on issues of gender, nobody who has ever come to me and asked me to do better as who I am has ever just told me all the things I'm doing wrong and then said, just sit in a corner and think about how bad you are. <laughs> right. Right. And and I and I still as I as I as I as I spread that out into the, like the more general application of what I'm seeing out there in the community. I don't see any of these voices, not Zane, not Olivia when she's spoken on gender, not any, mm -hmm. anybody else uh, who's been out there who has been tr trying to show us their perspective, wants us just to sit in a corner and think about how bad we are. 
Mm -hmm. uh, everybody that I've talked to and heard from is saying, reflect on what you've seen. Yes, there's a, there's yeah. a reflection comp component. Uh, and can we move as quickly as possible into actions, positive actions? Could you help? Right. That's 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 the, probably what I'm hearing the most often is could you help? And sometimes mm -hmm. they even give ideas. Uh, sometimes they don't see it as their mission to give me ideas. Sometimes they just want me to get up off my ass and help uh, right. and to figure it out. And that's fine, too. That's all right. Uh, but none of them are saying just sit in that corner and, and do nothing and, and be the bad person. Um, yeah, I think I think one of the one you, you make a, yeah. a really critical point there. Mm -hmm. um, pe people from traditionally marginalized mm -hmm. groups aren't your encyclopedia. Yeah. You yeah. know, you, maybe maybe ask, hey, I want to do this thing. Am I doing it the right way? Right. Is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, just, you know, grilling them on uh, helping, you know, make, making them try to make you understand Mm -hmm. isn't the isn't the right call yeah let, yeah let it's, them help it's, you it's, it's hard it's hard to find that line right i think it's gonna be d different for each individual that that we associate with and mm -hmm. this is where it pays off you know if if we have spent all the time since the last tragedy uh working to diversify our network and working mm -hmm. to uh hear and see and elevate the voices as i know you have and i have tried to and and others have, it's, I, I think it gets easier for us to differentiate between, because everybody's, they're not, a, nobody, no, no the, the black community is not a monolith. There are, there are people right. who, who, who are black who say, I'm fine if you want to come talk to me. I'm not tired. I'm not exhausted mm -hmm. by this yet. You know, <laughs> right. let me know what your questions you got. I'll try to answer. Mm -hmm. And there are others who are like, could you not? Um, yeah. cause I, I just can't be your one black friend who, right. um, you know, who is your encyclopedia as you put it uh, very well. Yeah. And, and, and so the, the chances are if, if people have been spending time in diverse communities and with, and with diverse relationships at work and in home and all these other things, and mm -hmm. if you've been trying hard to be, to listen and to learn, then it's easier now to know, mm, you know what, uh, this relationship can't bear that. Right. No, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. Whereas maybe this relationship, maybe that that individual has come to me and said, geez, you know, can we talk? Which actually, yeah. which, which I was like, oh, you know, yeah, I, I didn't know whether to call you or not. I'm so glad you called. You know, like, <laughs> so, that's, so that's, that's really um, the, the more diverse our networks, the easier these conversations are to have. So yeah. let's all think about this now. Before the next tragedy strikes, let's, here's an action, because you asked for a list of things. Let's mm -hmm. all make sure that we are doing everything we can, whether it's, you know, by the, by the books, by the people who know stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. who, have, who have made wonderful, wonderful, strong statements. Um, you know, engage in the conversations to the best of your ability and seek out diversity wherever you can so that your mm -hmm. own personal network is strong. Uh, listen more than you speak to those yeah. other voices. Um, and that was going to be, that was definitely going to be my point. Yeah. Talk sorry, a little. Sorry, I stole it. Talk a little, listen yeah. a lot. Yeah. And I, I, that it's, that's, that's really important. And, and I'll again, go mm -hmm. back to the point I made earlier. This is not about me and you. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we want to, we want to help. Mm -hmm. We want to do what we can. We want to make it better, but it's not about us being the agents of change. Right. It's not. It's not about us in the in the very very least. Mm -hmm. And if if the best thing that I can do is shut up and send money someplace, then that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, if the best thing that I can do, uh, like you suggest, is mm -hmm. broaden my social circles, then mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it's never ever ever about me doing it. It's right. about it getting done. Right. I am trying to do, and so I'm not going to talk about it a ton here. I am trying to do many things anonymously as well, um, and I think that I'll leave it at uh, at that. That it's not just donations, but it's there's other things you can that that people can mm -hmm. can do. I, you know, we're stuck in this place where here we are in a YouTube, you know, video. Yeah. You know, we're we're reading comments, folks. We're you know we're listening. You know, talk to us offline. You know, like where, wherever it is, mm -hmm. and we'll elevate voices and such. And 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 yet we also have to have, use our voice, right, and use our privilege right. to. To do that, I think one of the most, you know, like get get our asses out to protest, get our asses out, you know, for those of us who work in government, 
we have very specific roles in shaping yeah. policies, hiring practices, purchasing practices, and other things. I can become a technocrat on command, Sheldon. Let me know, and I can give you a 10-point <laughs> plan for the things right. that we can do within public institutions to start to dismantle some of these uh um, you know the, these structures and make or and or make them better. I, you know, so, so there are there are very definitive things that we can do and very concrete steps that we could take. What I have to say on the topic and what I have to do on the topic, I do want to reserve a portion of that to myself, uh, so that mm -hmm. I'm not seen as because because I, I, I that, that the last thing I want to do is is then mm -hmm. also be thinking. I know you just like you said like. Um, uh, we cannot be the white people at the podium taking the applause for right. for not being at the podium. Like you know, it's right. And 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 our and our our demographic block put us here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we put ourselves here too, and we've enjoyed the privilege. And we should be uncomfortable with this. Like like I think yes. part of it is here's something we can do when we when we when we, when we bemoan the fact that well I work for a mostly white organization this is going to be hard for us. Yeah, suck it up. That's nothing compared to the discomfort right. that other people have had having yeah. to come in and look around at a bunch of white faces and realize they're the only black or brown or yellow or red face in the room. Um, right. If I have to, if I have to be in some uncomfortable situations, yeah. it's nothing compared to the uncomfortable situations yeah. that the people from traditionally marginalized groups have right. been through for a long time. Right. I'm and, looking for. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. Go ahead. Yeah. At, if. If I can spend some mm -hmm. discomfort to equalize the playing field, mm -hmm. then that's what we're doing. Right. And I don't want to make it as simplistic for wizards as hire Zayn. I mean, they could. <laughs> Wouldn't kill him. Uh, it, it might not be something he wants to do. That's up to him to yeah, decide. The, you know, the, if, the if, if, if it offer ever comes, it's up to him. But I, but I, but I certainly think that I'd be interested to to hear from whether it's you or somebody else the next time you do a you know a one two three month stint at wizards to talk about like the next time you know you or i are there you know visiting the offices or working there or doing whatever when we look around are we going to have a different story to tell mm -hmm. than than the story you had to tell which is not a which is not a I understand. There were there were some encouraging things you had to say in the story you yeah. had to tell. Can we see it sound even more encouraging next time? I, and I know for a fact. And again, this is just because I know we have wizard staff who will, who will watch this. You know, for you, not for me. Um, <laughs> but if they're listening to the portions that I'm doing, uh, you know, I know that uh, that there are so many people there that would love to see this happen too. <laughs> yeah, I, the, that's I know the... that. Uh, well, a, a, a major point mm -hmm. here is that, yes, um, people work for corporations, mm -hmm. but the people aren't necessarily the corporations. Right. And there are a lot of people who, mm -hmm. who do jobs. And it, when truly bad things happen, it doesn't absolve them of anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I just work there. Right. 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 Um, right. But the the. Where's the where's the places? And again, this is an incredibly complex, yeah. nuanced, and maybe unanswerable uh, situation, right. right? That that person, the person that is in the cube next to you, is clearly not um, any of the ists, right? right. They're right. you know they're they're egalitarian and they're they're open and you know, right. they, they celebrate diversity. And then there's another person next to them that's like that. Right. And you see all these people mm -hmm. who are, you know, who, who are open to positive change yeah. that work for a corporation, mm -hmm. but somehow the but somehow corporate culture doesn't reflect what the beliefs of, you know, a, a lion's share of their individuals are. Yeah. And how do we how do we fix that? Is a yeah. again a question beyond the scope of this show. Um, oh no, it's yeah. not. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to. I mean, we can we can play at the edges at the very least. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, go ahead. You certainly raise the issue. And yeah, we, we can talk about it. It's like where? Yeah. Okay, how how do how do we get into this mismatch yeah. between um, what a, what a corporation does and what its what its mm -hmm. people believe in? Yeah. And uh, you know, unfortunately, it only it only takes uh, you know a few people, a few well placed people to sort of knock mm -hmm. the ship off course. Yeah, so much easier to destroy than to create. Yeah, so much easier to destroy. To, you know, to the, the the good things, the hard, the things that are hard to create, 
you know, make it, whether it's pottery or, you know, a, a craft of some sort, or whether you're talking mm-hmm. about civilizations or you're talking about, you know, a, a good corporate culture. Um, I, you know, I do have a, a, a brief thought on, on this for folks, not just working at Wizards, but anywhere, uh, which is first a recognition, you know, you get a paycheck from this place and mm-hmm. that's your, that's your livelihood. Um, and, and I know that that's, makes it hard. Um, Mm -hmm. it's a reason, not an excuse. Um, Mm -hmm. I want to put that out there that this is the reason why a lot of people don't speak up against their employer or speak truth to power that has power over them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple different things that, uh, that I would recommend, which is to, um, for them to, to put the pressure that they can to the maximum amount possible without, necessarily direct, you know, without doing anything foolish to, to, to really destroy your livelihood right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Like, don't go into your boss's office and scream at him and knock him over the head, you know, and tell him <laughs> you know, what, a, what, a, what a racist ass he or she is. Um, but uh, there is such thing as, as, as peer pressure, collegial pressure uh, within a corporate culture and within an institutional culture. And employees can demand things of their employer. And uh, that gives you, that buys you a little time. I think if you want to start down that road, if you haven't yet, and I'm sure some of them have. Uh, so thank you for those that have. Thank you. Uh, for those that have not yet joined that internal effort, if, if, that, if, if it exists, as I assume, um, maybe now's the time. And then well, I ever- think it's okay to think about your employer and to think about whether, you know, what, what kind of employer do you want to work for? And, and we know that there are corporations within the magic community that do have a better culture than others. Um, and in the yeah, gaming I, community, people people have different levels of tolerance for the fight. Yeah, and agreed. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna. I think I don't want to criticize anybody for keeping their head down, mm-hmm. uh, because there are people who um, there are people who will step up, and mm-hmm. well, we need to encourage those people who do and and help protect them right. when they do. Right. But <clears throat> I'm. I'm certainly not going to be a critical of, uh, you know, somebody who doesn't necessarily want to be um, you know, making themselves into a martyr. Right. Because they have to, you know, they, they have to feed their family. Right. It's right. It's, no, it's, nor, it's, nor am I. I'm, I'm going to simply encourage them to have the internal dialogue necessary to weigh all the costs and benefits that don't just accrue to themselves, but accrue to others. Uh, yeah. And maybe they're more active when it comes to other speaking truth to power that doesn't hold sway over them over their paycheck. Maybe they're mm-hmm. maybe that's how they're making balancing things out. And that's you know I understand that too. I, but I but I think you know what we've done, like we, you and I have had sen- even sentiments like that b- before, Sheldon. And and you know it's not just you and me. I get it. Uh, but I'm I'm eager and I'm thirsty for sentiments that go beyond the the sentiments and the the actions that have gotten us here. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I'm just. I want us to continue to listen to those who are marginalized, uh, yeah. to those who have not enjoyed the privileges that we've had, and to say, boy, if you think we should, if you think that I and state government need to be doing more, then I'm open to hearing, and I have heard from mm-hmm. folks who have, have more to say to me on that. And I think Wizards employees should also be listening to and thinking about the statements from these same communities. Uh, about uh, the decisions they make, and and it may come down at a, at a timeline that that is you know career appropriate. It may come down to a different decision of as to where to work. It may just like it comes to me. We're in a free market economy, and it just like it comes down to me to make a decision about where I spend my dollars and on what games I play. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see wizards as somebody who has been part of the community for a long time and is a long time uh, enthusiast for this game. Uh, I want to see things change. I want to see something different. And I want to put my money toward, to the extent that money speaks, I want to use that part of my voice to speak in ways that maybe I haven't spoken before. Um, yeah, it, and it's so, incumbent upon us to, to, to say more than just, you need to change, or we mm-hmm. don't like this. Yeah. You know, we don't like this, we'd mm-hmm. like you to change, and here's some here are some ideas or here's some help. Mm-hmm. You know, right. we we're I think we're past the point of that is bad. Right. We we need to to move into the point, especially again, 
those of us that have the opportunity mm -hmm. to say, and here's what we think you should do. There mm -hmm. certainly have already been, uh, there was a Hipsters of the Coast article yeah. uh, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 10 things that the gaming industry can do. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the kind of stuff we have to do. It's not, yeah. you know, shouting shouting at someone for their mistakes it isn't gonna isn't gonna fix anything. Right. And I think we're in a in a point where we need to fix things. We obviously right. have to understand how the mistakes happened, mm -hmm. uh, and and maybe where the you know where the disconnects came from. Right. But we're, we need to we need to move forward into repairing those things. Right. And you know sometimes like well, why now? I you know mm -hmm. seeing that in social media forums. Why now? Mm -hmm. You know what's so special about now? <laughs> now is the time. If, if we haven't right. done something right previously, the mm. best time to do something right is exactly this moment. And yeah, time's arrow. We can't go back five years. <laughs> right. I mean, you want to wait five years? I mean, geez. Yeah, I, I get if, it. I get why you have if, that reaction. <laughs> if, if I personally or we as a group or whatever haven't done enough up to this point, mm -hmm. then now is the time for us to start doing, to doing more. Right. And we might not even be able to do enough in a day or a week or a month. Or but in order to get there, yeah. in order to get there, mm -hmm. again, baby steps. Right. We have to, we have to start. We have to start moving forward. Right. And if you know, if our steps are rocky, mm -hmm. uh, like like some people are, are, you know, are saying that this first step by Wizards of the Coast is a little rocky. Right. Help correct us. Right. You know, uh, support us and hold us up and and point us in the right direction. Right. And that's uh, that's how we get effective and positive change. I yeah. No, I, I agree. You know, none of us get off. None of us get off this earth alive, uh, Sheldon. And it's uh, what we got is the time between now and the time we're done. And you know, we can either spend that time wringing our hands, you know, accusing each other of whatever, or we can, or we can get to work. Uh, and so, for those who are contributing to the discussion, ways for us to move forward. Thank you. Uh, I'm learning from you. Uh, and I'm looking forward to learning more. And if I have some s small amount of wisdom to teach others, great. That's fine, mm -hmm. too. I'll do what I can and contribute in the other ways that I can and will contribute. Uh, but for those of you that are that are stuck in neutral, uh, for those of you that are, um, I would say, disingenuously reading uh, the criticisms of, of wizards and the community and others as some sort of invitation to sit in the corner and sulk, um, okay. no. And, you know, I, mean, I guess you choose how you want to go out. Uh, I'm not going to go out sulking. I'm not going to go out passive. Uh, I'm going out, you know, a, a different way, uh, a more active way. And, and so uh, that's what I want to be known for. That's what I, if I want to be known at all, uh, that's just what I want to be known in, in my own, know myself to be is somebody Fair. who can do that. Um, and I know, I know that about you too. So what is wrong with you, Sheldon? Apparently nothing this week, <laughs> whatever, fine. Sure. You're okay. You're All right. I'll, I'll do two things next week. <laughs> yeah. The, I, I think the, there's, there's plenty of, of work to still be done and I hope and mm -hmm. hope that we can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately it's time for us to wrap up on mm -hmm. this episode of commander community. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, Please remember to follow, like, subscribe, and ring those bells. We'd hate for you to miss an episode yeah. um, at any time. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, why don't you tell these folks where they can find you on the social media? On the social media's tubes, you can find me on <laughs> uh, Twitter at Anthony A. Alonji. Uh, that's Anthony A. A. L. O. N. G. I. And then on Facebook, I have a presence as well, uh, and that is Anthony Alonji. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook by my name, at Sheldon Mennery. Uh, please tune into my other show here on Star City Games, The Command Chair. You're seeing Thursday. another show? Yes, sir. I knew that. With I other, I've with seen other the evidence looming. for a long time. I just didn't want to admit it to myself. <laughs> with other Commander Luminaries. Uh, that's every Thursday. No here such on Star thing. City. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> please continue. That's every Thursday here on Star City Games and on YouTube. Also on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern in the United States, you can catch me on the Commander RC Twitch channel. That's twitch.tv slash Commander RC. Come for the games, stay for the hilarity. And finally on Sundays, you can find me right here on Star City Games, writing about the best format in Magic history. As always, I'm Sheldon Minner. 
And I'm Anthony Alonji. Thank you for being part of our community. Thank you.